So just in this hour of happening now, North Korean state media releasing new images showing Kim Jong-un inspecting what may be new missiles. Well, thanks for having me, Melissa. Look, I mean, what we see here is at least two missiles. It looks like a submarine launch, a medium range missile, the Pukuk Song 3, at least from the title they say there. Um, and then we see a potentially new long range missile, three stage missile, uh, which is apparently is labeled the Hwasong uh, 14. Uh, both concerning. Uh, now, North Korea has a tendency uh, to show things that aren't real or are still in development. So this could be in part, you know, an effort to, to sort of push back a little bit. But it is, it is concerning that they're building these long range missiles uh, that have have more range and more capability to strike us here in the homeland. Kim Jong-un, I respect the fact that I believe he is starting to respect us. I'd like to see Mr. Trump go ahead and deal with this, and I'd like to see him do it with a non-military capability if possible, right. and that would be through sanctions, maybe even a military blockade to isolate North Korea, but give them incentives like uh, major economic benefits if, uh, if they modify their behavior. Uh, that's what I'd like to see, and, and uh, we'll just have to wait and see what Trump does. Joint military exercises between South Korea and the U.S. have triggered the typical heated response from North Korea. On Tuesday, Pyongyang state-run Korea Central News Agency delivered a warning from the North's military, claiming the North will push through with a ruthless retaliation against South Korea and the United States. According to the report, North Korea's military spokesperson blamed Washington for ignoring its warning to make the right choice. It added that the U.S. should take responsibility for any catastrophic consequences of a military confrontation. But despite all that, North Korea is digging in its heels. One of Pyongyang's most senior diplomats insists that the regime will never give up its nuclear arsenal, calling it a necessary deterrent. is deeply concerned by the deterioration in Cambodia's democratic climate in recent weeks. Two months ago, Cambodia received widespread recognition for running transparent, peaceful local elections. In the past two weeks, however, the achievement has been eclipsed by troubling government actions, curtailing freedom of the press and civil society's ability to operate. These include the government's August 23rd decision to expel the National Democratic Institute, NDI, which is a NGO, from Cambodia, the reported closure of Cambodia's only opposition-aligned radio station, and tax investigations into independent media outlets and NGOs, including Cambodia Daily, The Voice of America, Radio Free Asia, and NGOs called Lagadco, Ad Hoc, and Comfrol. Cambodia, in a process of reconciliation and recovery from decades of conflict, has benefited in recent years from electoral competition and active and diverse media and civil society groups. We encourage the government to allow NDI, the Cambodia Daily, and other independent media and civil society organizations to continue their important activities so that Cambodia's 2018 national elections can take place in a free and open environment. I'll take your questions on that one in just a minute if anyone has any questions. Uh, finally, I have a call I'd like to read out uh, for you today. Secretary Tillerson spoke by phone earlier today to Chinese State Councilor Yang Jia Chur. Uh, Secretary Tillerson provided an overview of, of President Trump's South Asia policy. They focused specifically on the Afghanistan and Pakistan policy 
uh, elements of that. The two sides also discuss global, regional, and bilateral issues of mutual concern. The conversation is a continuation of our U.S.-China strategic bilateral dialogue. And with that, I will take your questions. Hi. Would you like to start? Yes, I would. Um, I was going to start with Egypt, but since you opened with Cambodia, I, I'll start there. Um, in terms of the closures, mm -hmm. are you um, demanding or calling on the Cambodian government to reverse them? Uh, how has your expression of concern been relayed to the Cambodian government? Yeah. So a couple things that we've done. Um, I know that uh, Secretary Tillerson has spoken with his uh, counterparts uh, in Cambodia in uh, recent weeks and months. Our ambassador uh, to Cambodia has met uh, with the uh, Prime Minister of Cambodia. Uh, I believe it was within the last couple of weeks. Uh, he also, because there's a tax component here where uh, some publications are being taxed at an exorbitant rate that we see as, as being a, a biased approach uh, on the part of the government. So our ambassador has had conversations with the head of uh, what I'll just refer to as the tax agency there uh, to try to get them to uh, regard taxes or impose taxes in a fair and neutral fashion. Right. But clearly that hasn't worked. I mean, the Cambodia Daily has been hit with a tax bill of more than $6 million. Yeah, it was like $6 million that they have to pay in, by, by September, September or some, something. Yeah. So, so we're I mean, uh, you, continuing, you, to, continuing to have conversations uh, with the government to encourage them to uh, approach this in a fair fashion. This is a part of our, um, you know, what we would consider our, our calls to uh, promote democracy. And they're clearly not doing that right now. And so we're continuing to have conversations with that, so, about that. So, so in other words, the, the administration is remains committed to um, defending, supporting freedom of the press and freedom of speech. Yes, very uh, much so. Well, okay. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm asking this is because back in February, um, the, the, a Cambodian government official said, I mean, it was widely reported at the time, said that U.S. President Donald Trump's attack on the media, attacks on the media, are an inspiration to his own country to observe limits on freedom of expression. This is uh, who in Cambodia said this? This is the spokesman for the Cambodian government cabinet, okay. Faye uh, Sipan. And he specifically mentioned voice of uh, local voice of democracy along with US government funded radio free asia and voice of america as uh, as being problematic and said that they should reconsider their use of airtime in publishing or risk having the government take action in response to alleged exaggerations excitement incitements and threats to Matt, I, I think peace so my question is this are you concerned at all that your message promoting freedom of speech and uh, freedom of the press is is being diminished somewhat by the president president's own comments. What we do here each and every day, and you all hear me talking about that and uh, many of my colleagues here at the State Department, is talk about not only free and fair elections and the importance of that, but the importance of free speech, including speech that can be uncomfortable to governments and nations. We talk about that uh, from Turkey to Cambodia to you name the country, um, Venezuela, et cetera. So we will continue to push that message. Uh, that is something that we take very seriously. That is something that is promoted here at the State Department across all administrations, we continue to promote that. So that will not change our conversations uh, between the ambassador and uh, his counterparts and also the Prime Minister of Cambodia. I do not anticipate that changing. Our message won't change. Okay. We care about freedom of the press. That's not going to okay. change. Last one on this. Um, if they go, don't heed your advice mm -hmm. and go ahead with these closures, uh, is there going to be any consequence? Uh, I, I'm not going to forecast any potential activity. You know, a lot of our conversations we have behind the scenes uh, that we conduct our diplomacy, uh, you know, behind closed doors, because in some countries that can be the most effective way of getting them to do things. So we'll continue with those conversations. Thanks. Okay. All right. Uh, anybody else have anything on Cambodia? Egypt. Shall we start with Egypt? Who is Egypt today? Egypt. Hold on. Who had Egypt today? Michelle, how are you? Let's start with Egypt. Can you, can you talk a little bit about um, conversations with the Egyptians? Um, they seem to have been uh, caught off guard uh, by this move to to cut aid. Um, has he described to them what they need to do to have this aid restored? Yeah, well, I, I would take issue with that. They weren't caught off guard, and that's because uh, the secretary had a conversation with the foreign minister of Egypt and provided a heads up as to what would be taking place. So. Uh, were they caught off guard? The answer would be no. 
Uh, con Congress has now been notified of this action that's taking place. You know, we consider Egypt to be a key strategic partner of the United States. We're committed to strengthening our bilateral relationship with Egypt, but uh, we have decided that in the interest of the United States, it's in our best interest to exercise a national security waiver. That obligates $195 million to basically be put in account and accessed at another time the funds uh, that would normally go to Egypt or were set to go to Egypt will be held in reserve until we can see, and this is why we're doing this, until we can see progress on democracy. Matt, we were just talking about democracy. This is a major concern of ours. We've talked about uh, their new NGO law in Egypt and that that has been a concern of ours all along. Egypt has been put essentially on notice with this. Now, as I talk about that money that's been put off to the side, I want to mention that they still did get a billion dollars in fiscal year 2017. So they still got some of their money, but we're withholding part of that money until they can start to come around and adhere to uh, democratic reforms. One other question. I mean, is it only about the democratic reforms, or, or has Secretary Tillerson also raised concerns about things like e Egypt's ties to North Korea. It's, it's about human rights. Uh, human rights is obviously a very big, uh, it's, it's a part of what we do here each and every day, uh, promoting human rights. Um, there is another pot of money, $65.5 million, and also $30 million. Uh, one is the foreign military financing uh, pot, and the other is the economic support funds. And those, we've decided, will be used in support of other security partners in the region that will not in our view, undermine Egypt's security. So really, it's about democracy and it's about human rights.